When you think of the staggering symbols that the Indians produced, I mean, the, the dancing Shiva, for example, we've never produced anything as comprehensive as this. The dancing Shiva, the, those little bronze statues, it is the, the Shiva with four arms dancing with one foot raised. Uh, and, well, I mean, I'll go into the details, they're really quite extraordinary. It's, uh, the, the figure stands within a great circle, a sort of halo, which has flames going out, I mean, the symbols of flames. And this is the, the circle of uh, mass, energy, space, time. I mean, this is the material world, the, the great world of the all-embracing material world with its flames. Within this, Shiva dances. He's called Nataraja, the lord of the dance. And uh, he dances, he's everywhere in the universe. I mean, this is, this is his dance. Uh, the manifestation of the world is called his lila, his play. It's, uh, I mean, he sends his rain upon the just and the unjust, and he's not a, he's beyond good and evil, of course. It's all an immense manifestation of play. Uh, his, uh, he has this long hair, which is the hair of the yogin, contemplative, and it streams out to the limits of the universe. You see, therefore, he this sort of yogic knowledge of this contemplation includes everything. He has four arms. In the upper right arm he holds a little drum, which is the drum which summons things into creation. You beat upon this drum and things come into existence. In his left arm he holds a fire, which is what destroys everything. Uh, he both creates and destroys. His uh, lower right hand is held up in this attitude which means, be not afraid, in spite of everything, it is all right. The other hand points down at his feet, and one foot is planted squarely on the back of a repulsive dwarf, this infinitely powerful dwarf called Muyalaka, I think his name is, who is the, uh, the ego, and he has to break the back of the ego, you see. The, uh, what he's really pointing at is the other foot, which is raised. And this means this foot is raised against gravitation and is the symbol of um, spiritual contemplation. The whole thing is there, you see. I mean, the, the world of space and time and matter and energy, the world of um, creation and destruction, um, the world of uh, psychology. I mean, how do you get out of this? I mean, if you... Don't break the back of the ego, you're lost. And if you don't uh, uh, practice um, contemplation, uh, there will be no liberation for you. I mean, it, uh, we don't have anything remotely approaching such a comprehensive symbol, which is both cosmic and psychological and spiritual. I mean, it is really uh, most unfortunate that we have such miserable uh, symbols. It's part of uh, the regular Hinduism but it is specifically Shivaite. And then one of the manifestations, of course, is called Bhairava of Shiva, where, who is also dancing, but he dances in cemeteries. And, I mean, to remind us that um, the dance of life isn't always very jolly, I mean, that he dances just as much in, in misery and death as in life and elation. I and mean, this has to be accepted. And, of course, again, it's only by the lifted foot that we can accept it. I mean, it actually is in completely compatible with the... Uh, modern scientific idea. I mean, it includes the world, you see, of mass, energy, space and time. Uh, and the idea of the, of the infinite energy dancing timelessly and forever through this world. Uh, dancing through human uh, mentality, too. I mean, uh, that the world is felt to be, of course, a kind of outrage, because it, the play goes on even inside ourselves, although we are sentient beings, and yet the hand is raised, everything is finally all right, in spite of everything, if, as Buddha says, I show you sorrow and the ending of sorrow. The ending of sorrow is putting your foot on the back of the dwarf and raising the, foot, the other foot in, uh, against gravity into the state of contemplation. I mean, the whole thing is there, stated in this uh, single extremely elegant. I mean, the, uh, these uh, Shiva images from the south of India are very, very elegant. They're most beautiful pieces of sculpture, the best of them. But uh, it's a shame we don't have any good symbols like this uh, to, um, to remind us of who we are and of um, what we can do about it, if anything.
No, we're very, very poor in it. I mean, we have some of the Christian symbols, which are not really satisfactory. I mean, the symbol of the cross is, is fairly good, but it's, it's, uh, it doesn't take into account the sort of cosmic side of life. I mean, it doesn't take into account mass, energy, space, and time, which is essential. It doesn't take into account, I mean, as it stands, it doesn't take into account the uh, importance of uh, contemplation. No, it's, uh, I mean, we, there are other symbols, of course, within Christianity which do, but a, a single comprehensive sy uh, symbol like the Shiva symbol we do not have, and it's very unfortunate. In this whole business of the, of the organized um, manipulation of um, symbols is, uh, I mean, the, the, the human mind is a, a symbolific instrument. I mean, it, it exists to manufacture symbols, to turn immediate experience into symbols for the purpose of managing it with a, in a fairly convenient way. Uh, the question is, uh, can, can we get on with uh, fairly scientific symbols, realistic symbols, and then uh, concentrate on the immediate experience. I don't know. I mean, I, I simply don't know whether th this is a possible as a sort of general uh, attitude towards the world. I think it's certainly possible in, the, in, in isolated individuals, but uh, whether in fact it will ever turn out to, to be something which appeals to great numbers of people, I have no idea.